fam. What is up, gang? Thank you for checking out Sledgehammer TV today. If AEW's Double or Nothing pay-per-view didn't shake the WWE and Vince McMahon, this week's episode of Talk is Jericho just might, as John Moxley sits down with Y2J to tell the world the exact reason why he's leaving the WWE and in the process reveals just how screwed up Vince McMahon and the WWE creative process truly is. And we are here to talk about it right here and right now. My name is Nick Nightmare and you are watching the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show as we get set to talk about the John Moxley interview. Let's do it. It's almost like over the years, like like a physical depression set sets in, because they take away the thing that you love. Like, you know, like I was saying, you're being obsessed with wrestling 24 seven. It's like they take it away from you. They go like, oh, don't worry about coming up with your own promos because we have a writer. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about coming up with cool things to do in your matches because we have producers who will tell you exactly what to do in your matches. Right, right, right. Don't bother thinking of storylines because we've already written them for you. Don't be an artist kind, to be creative. Kind, it's kind of like, hey, don't worry, we we've taken care of everything. You just show up. Mm -hmm. So you go, oh, okay. So what do I do in my off time? What do I have to think about? Apparently what you have to think about, Mr. Ambrose, is where the hell else can I go to do what I love? Because the WWE is a big, gigantic mess. In one interview, this man has proved everything that we, as a community, have believed. Everything that I have said and have tried to bring to light to all of you for the last three years that Vince McMahon and the way the WWE does business does nothing but kill professional wrestling. They don't want wrestling anymore. They just want to be a TV show. And that's the bottom line. Not because Stone Cold said so, but I guess because Vince McMahon said so. It's, it's the most fascinating, fantastic, and simultaneously most fucked up thing that could ever happen to the world of professional wrestling. How can any of you sit there now and defend this company and the garbage that it puts forth and calls a wrestling show? The most telling thing about the John Moxley interview, the one thing that stood out to me almost more than anything, was the fact that AEW was a non-issue for him. This was not... The reason why he left, he had no intentions on coming to AEW. When he made this decision, AEW was not even a thing. He knew he was going to leave the WWE. There was no amount of money they could offer him. He didn't even take a look at the contract that they gave him to try to have him stay with the company. And the most important thing is that even if there was no AEW, if there was no impact, if there was no other wrestling organization in the entire world but the WWE, he still would have left. And he would have rather started his own promotion, trained his own guys, and just started off the wrestling renaissance by himself, if need be, just to get away from the poison and the sickening way that the WWE handles business. When a man comes on and tells you that going to work made him physically ill. He would wake up on a Monday and just feel sick to his stomach to the point where he didn't even want to get out of bed at times. He felt like he was played as a joke. He felt like a fool. Just like us, the things that he was given to do, he felt were ridiculous and made no sense. But like a good employee, he goes out there, he tried to make the best of it. He tried to get it over as much as he could because he's a decent man. He made a point to say, I didn't want to go out with a bang. I didn't want to leave the WWE with a bad taste because of many reasons. One, not the least of which, is the fact that his wife still works there. He has a lot of friends that work there. He said his moving to AEW, he hopes is not going to affect the company in that much of a negative way. He wants it to affect the WWE in a positive light and make things better, just like most of us. He doesn't want to put his friends 
out of a job he doesn't he wants his friends to do well in the WWE. He started off the whole interview wishing well to the WWE and saying how grateful he was to all of the things that this company has gave to him. He met his wife there. He made a shit ton of money. He's paid off all his homes. He don't need money anymore. Now what he needs is personal self-fulfillment and the WWE does not allow for that. The WWE takes a guy like Dean Ambrose and they want him to do really, really stupid shit. Well, it was three or four things. They weren't things that a cool person does, that a relatable person does, that a guy you want to ha- hang, uh, sorry, a guy you want to have a beer with does. Not even things a guy you would root for does. These are things that an idiot would do. Like things along the lines of like driving backwards on the street in a unicycle or, uh, you know, sharing a pizza with a homeless man on the street. Just weird mm-hmm. stuff like that. Weird stuff like that. That is asinine. That is ridiculous. I can see Vince McMahon trying to pitch this thing. Oh, but Dean, this is you. You're a lunatic fringe. <laughs> right? You can ride backwards down the street on a unicycle. That's loony. That's zany. That's crazy. That's Saul Dean. Can you see him fucking doing that? Trying to Jedi mind trick him. He even made a point to mention that as well, that there were many times that he's gone to air his grievances where Vince kind of Jedi mind tricks you into believing that this is the the best possible scenario and the best possible thing for his show. And he would leave the meetings more often than not saying, if this is what you want on your show, then I'm going to go out and I'm going to do it. But when somebody says that to you, shouldn't you like have a red light go off in the back of your head like, well, why doesn't he think this should be on my show? What's so wrong with this? This company is so fucked up. They went so close to the line on the Roman Reigns cancer thing when he first was diagnosed with cancer and then they wanted to make it a part of the storyline for Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose. They were going so far overboard in the writing room with that that Dean Ambrose had to make a stand and be like, I'm not saying that. He truly believes that some of the things that the WWE wanted him to say regarding Roman Reigns and his battle with leukemia would have had sponsors fleeing the company. It would have pissed off Susan G. Komen. Not the least to piss off him. Personally. How could you make me say this about my friend? It's just awful. He wouldn't reveal exactly what it was that was said. That's how bad it was. What kind of people do you got fucking working in there? What kind of monkeys sitting around making cancer jokes? Or bad taste comments about somebody who's going through a real life thing? That's fucking awful. You want to, everybody's wondering, oh, why Dean Ambrose leave? He was part of the Shield. He was made a big star. It doesn't matter when you don't get to go to work and do what you love to do. One of my favorite things that he said was he, him and Renee, when they're home, they like to sit around and they like to watch live performances. I do the same thing. Many nights I just throw on a concert if I happen to catch a good one and I just let it play and you get to watch them in their element just shredding at the guitar and the, the drummer's just banging away, dripping sweat like Shane McMahon. And it's awesome. And he, as a performer, has the opportunity to do something very similar to to playing music. You go out there and you perform for the crowd and he's not feeling fulfilled because he's not being allowed to do what he feels his character should do. He's being told to ride a fucking unicycle down a sidewalk backwards. This is what he had to deal with. But the straw that broke the camel's back was one segment on Monday Night Raw, which I think you all remember very well. Dean Ambrose is in the midst of telling the whole world that we smell. Right? Everybody's disgusting and we all stink and we all smell. And this is all the brainchild of Vince McMahon. And it was fucking awful television. And it went so far as to have him be inoculated by a doctor getting shots to protect him against the disgusting city of Poughkeepsie, New York. And that was the night that Dean Ambrose went back to his hotel room and said, I can't do this anymore. They keep giving me shit to work with, and I can't make nothing out of it. And then Vince McMahon, when he would be confronted by Dean, would have the balls to say, well, you don't like it, you have creative license. You know, and then he would come forth with with an idea of his own, and it would just get shot down. And he would get memos reading. 
Dean needs to read his promos as they are written. Dean needs to understand that this is the way it needs to be. What kind of a company are you running here? Another thing that I thought was very telling was the fact that Chris Jericho was able to liken the experience in the WWE right now to the way he felt right before he left the WCW with Eddie Guerrero and Perry Saturn and Dean Malenko. They left WCW for the same reasons that guys like Cody Rhodes and Dean Ambrose are fleeing. The same reason why guys want out of their contract. The same reason why Sasha Banks is having an issue with the WWE. Because the creative system is a disgusting, poisonous mess. And at the head of it all is a snake-like human being. An old man who thinks toilet humor is funny. An old man who thinks immature gags are funny. And an old man who has no fucking idea what he has at his fingertips. The man has truly lost sight of what made his own company special. And unless you're who they pick, you will never make it to the top. All these guys that have come up from NXT, they are at the mercy of this fool who is surrounded by glad-handed yes-men, as CM Punk so accurately pointed out all those years ago, who just tell him, yes, that's a great idea. We'll do what you want, sir, that's a great idea. The vets like to say that the the generation now, they don't like to stand up. They're afraid of losing their jobs. They just go with the flow. But that doesn't seem to be the case. Dean Ambrose on many, many opportunities made his grievances known. And then when he made his announcement that he was leaving the company, Vince stood there and be like, Oh, I wish you would have told me how unhappy you were. I wish you would have said something. And he's like, what the hell are you talking about? I'm in here every week complaining to you. He said the minute they found out he had a shred of comedic timing, he was just relegated to the comedy section of the WWE Universe. He felt stifled. He felt frustrated. But yet the man had the respect and the dignity to finish his contract like a man. He did the right thing for his family. He didn't want Renee to have a problem, right? But then, subsequently, you come to this interview and you don't think this is going to ruffle some feathers, bro. (laughs) Just, Just throwing that out there. But this is a very significant moment in the history of professional wrestling. Because the WWE has two choices here. They can ignore this and go about business as usual. Or they could get pissed off and just in spite of Dean Ambrose's comments and in spite of the way people feel, maybe turn things around. I don't know, maybe the board of directors will get wind of this interview and want Vince McMahon removed. He is the end-all, be-all. He has majority say in the stock, as far as I believe. So I don't think that's even a real possibility. But if people start to dis- to voice their displeasure vocally to this crazy maniac of a man, maybe something can happen. Maybe if it's more than just the wrestlers. Because he looks at the wrestlers like his toys, man. These are just pieces in his puzzle and he's going to do whatever the fuck he wants. The way John Moxley outlined a day in his life, from the minute he would get to Raw and the fact that he would have to speak to this writer to get this line removed and then he'd be handed another script and then there's a whole bunch of other shit that he hated because it was stupid and then he'd have to go talk to Vince and then Vince would try to convince him to do it. Vince wouldn't budge and he would go out there and be forced to do it. And he would do it to the best of his ability. And then he would just repeat the same process with every single show. He gives his notice that he's finally going to leave and they promise him they're not going to bury him. And you want to tell me that whole Nia Jax thing wasn't for them to have a chuckle? Of course it was. The fact that he lost so unceremoniously to EC3 who is now what? eaten in the back during the Usos block party. All useless. Everything they did to him was useless. And then when he filmed his final appearance for that shield, the last stand or whatever the fuck they called it, they paid this man 500 bucks. Thanks for everything you did. Here's 500 bucks. And according to Jericho and Moxley, that's like what an extra gets. 
anybody that you've ever seen in the No Way Jose fucking conga jerk-off party. All of the rosebuds. You make an appearance, you get 500 bucks. Boom, that's what Dean Ambrose was worth to them on his last night. And then you wonder why this guy tuck tail and run. He felt creatively just exhausted. He was physically and mentally drained from doing something that he's always wanted to do. And that is the reason why he left. I can't tell you how important this interview actually is. And though I never usually plug anybody else's podcast, this is Y2J we're talking about. And if you haven't heard it, I gave you guys a little bit of a taste. You have to go to Talk Is Jericho. Just type it into your search bar. You'll find it somewhere on some streaming podcast service somewhere. Listen to this man, and you will have no choice but to hate Monday Night Raw and SmackDown even more than you may already do. I I can't wait to see what the future brings for John Moxley. I can't wait to see what's going to transpire in the WWE as a result of this. I'm actually going to go on record and I'm going to predict nothing. I'm going to predict they're not going to do shit. They should. They have a tremendous amount of egg on their face after this, and they should. But they won't. The best thing about this for me, really, is just being proven right. I love to be right. I love to <laughs> to be proven right. And even though inside I wanted to be wrong, I wanted to be able to blame other people, I wanted to be able to believe that Vince McMahon wouldn't purposely or just consciously be destroying this beautiful sport that we love from within. He may not be doing it intentionally, but the man has got to go. And where you have to go after watching this is to talk is Jericho. Listen to this interview and you will know without a shadow of a doubt that everything we've always believed and thought is absolutely true about the behind the scenes bullshit going on at the WWE. Thank you guys so much for joining me for this quick little extra short for the weekend with this unexpected dropping of the biggest interview of all time, if you ask me. Three million listens, I believe it was, within its first 24 hours. I I could be wrong on that, but this is taking over the internet. Everybody's talking about it, so you know we were going to be talking about it right here on the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show. Don't forget, if you missed this week's Monday Night Raw and SmackDown review, go check out the hammerings because they are a plenty as they are live on this channel. We have the Super Showdown WWE 2K Undertaker versus Goldberg match simulation and prediction with yours truly on commentary. And we have Randy Orton versus Triple H coming at you guys later on this weekend as we continue to try to get excited for the WWE's worst booked pay-per-view that I have ever seen. And if you don't want to miss any of that and our upcoming hammering of the Super Showdown, you need to be subscribed right now. Hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell so that every time an awesome video just like this one drops, you will not miss it. Don't forget to smash that like button if you enjoyed today's episode. If you liked my little clips from Talk Is Jericho, my little teasers to get you guys to go over there and listen to it, you can hit that thumbs up. If you like anything I had to say today, you could hit that thumbs up. And you know why else you could hit that thumbs up? Just because as a family here, we are awesome. And then don't forget to share this video with each and every one of your wrestling buddies all over the wrestling world, especially if they would be interested in hearing a little bit of something about the John Moxley interview and showing them that this is the place to be when you want your wrestling and entertainment news bullshit-free and full of fun and truth and justice. Thank you guys all once again for being with me here. My name is Nick Nightmare. This is the team Thor the Sledgehammer, the official Sledgehammer of the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show, his tag team partner, the world heavyweight champion of all the microphones in all the world, Mr. Blue, the snowball, and the most important member of the team, as always, is each and every one of of you that is going to do it and we are out of here and we will see you next time right here on your new favorite wrestling show the sledgehammer wrestling show only on sledgehammer tv right here on youtube.com moxley baby whoo